And when I ran for office, I went to Detroit and I gave a speech to automakers uh, where I promised that I was going to raise fuel standards on our cars so that they'd go further on a gallon of gas. I said we should do the same thing on trucks. I have to tell you, when I said it, I didn't get a lot of applause in the room because there was a time when automakers were resisting higher fuel standards because change isn't easy. But you know what? After three decades of not doing anything, we got together with the oil companies. We got together with the unions. We got together with folks who usually do not see eye to eye, and we negotiated new fuel economy standards that are going to make sure our cars average nearly 55 miles per gallon by the middle of the next decade. That's nearly double what they get today. Yeah. Nearly double. Now, because of these new standards for cars and trucks, they're going to all going to be able to go further and use less fuel every year. And that means pretty soon you'll be able to fill up your car every two weeks instead of every week. And over time, that saves you, a typical family, about $8,000 a year. You like that, don't you? $8,000, that's, that's no joke. We can reduce our oil consumption by more than 12 billion barrels. And thanks to the super truck program that we've started with companies like this one, trucks will be able to save more than $15,000 in fuel costs every year. Think about that, $15,000. Looks like somebody might have fainted up here. If we got uh, 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 some of the EMS, somebody. Don't worry about Folks do this all the time in my meetings. I mean, I. <laughs> The, uh, you, you always got to eat before you stand for a long time. That's a little tip, but I, they'll be okay. Just make sure that, uh, give them a little room. All right, everybody all right? Okay. So, so these trucks can save $15,000 every year. I, I want people to think about what that means for businesses, what it means for consumers. It is real progress, and it's happening because of American workers and American know-how. It's, it's happening because of you. It's happening because of you. We're also making it easier for big companies, some of your customers, like UPS and FedEx, to make the shift to fuel-efficient cars and trucks. We call it the National Clean Fleets Partnership. And since we announced it last year, the number of companies that are taking part in it has tripled. And that means more customers for your trucks. We're creating more customers for your trucks. And I, I am proud to say that the federal government is leading by example. One thing the federal government has a lot of is cars and trucks. We got a lot of cars and we got a lot of trucks. And so what I did was I directed every department, every agency in the federal government to make sure that by 2015, 100 percent of the vehicles we buy run on alternative fuels. 100 percent. So we're, we, we're one of the biggest customers in the world for cars and trucks. And we want to set that bar high. We want to set a standard that says, by 2015, 100% of, of cars alternative fuels. So we're making progress, Mount Holly. But, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much natural gas or flex fuel or electric vehicles you have if there's no place to charge them up or fill them up. So that's why I'm announcing today a program that will put our communities on the cutting edge of what clean energy can do. To cities and towns all across the country, what, you're, what we're going to say is, if you make a commitment to buy more advanced vehicles for your community, whether they run on electricity or biofuels or natural gas, we'll help you cut through the red tape and build fueling stations nearby. And and we'll offer tax breaks to families that buy these cars, 
companies that buy alternative fuel trucks like the ones that are made right here at Mount Holly. So we're going to give communities across the country more of an incentive to make the shift to more energy efficient cars. Uh, in fact, when I was up in New Hampshire uh, uh, at, at, at Nashua, they had already converted their, all, their, uh, all their dump trucks. They were in a process, because of this program, they were converting it to natural gas-driven trucks. Th th this is something that we did in education. We called it Race to the Top. We said, we'll put in more money, but we want you to reform. We're going to give you an incentive to do things in a different way. And if we do the same thing with clean energy, we can save consumers money and we can make sure the economy is more secure. So we've got to keep investing in American-made energy and we've got to keep investing in the vehicles that run on it. That's where our future is. And in order to continue this progress, we're going to have to make a choice. We've got to decide where our, our, our priorities are as a country. And that's up to all of you. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Right now, four billion of your tax dollars go straight to the oil industry every year. Four billion dollars in subsidies that other companies don't get. Now keep in mind, these are some of the same companies that are making record profits every time you fill up your gas tank. We're giving them extra billions of dollars on top of near record profits that they're already making. Anybody think that's a good idea? No. Me neither. It doesn't make any sense. The, the American people have subsidized the oil industry long enough. They don't need the subsidies. It's time to end that taxpayer giveaway to an industry that's never been more profitable, invest in clean energy that's never been more promising. So, I've, so I called on Congress, eliminate these subsidies right away. There's no excuse to wait any longer. And we should put every member of Congress on record. They can stand up for the oil companies or they can stand up for the American people and this new energy future. We can place our bets on the fuel of the past or we can place our bets on American know-how and American ingenuity and American workers like the ones here at Diamond. That's the choice we face. That's what's at stake right now. So, you know, in between shifts, get on, get on the phone or email or send a letter or tweet. Your member of Congress, ask them where they stand on this the, uh, be, because it will make a difference. And you'll know where I stand on this. Let's make sure our voices are heard. You know, the next time you hear some politician trotting out some three-point plan for $2 gas, you let them know we know better. Tell them we're tired of hearing phony election year promises that never come about. What we need is a serious, sustained, all of the above strategy for American-made energy, American-made efficiency, American innovation, American fuel-efficient trucks, American fuel-efficient cars. We may not get there in one term. It's, it, it's, it's going to take us a while to, 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 to wean ourselves off of the old and grab the new. But we're going to meet this challenge because we are Americans. Our destiny is not written for us, it is written by us. We decide what that next chapter is going to be. And I'm confident, working with folks like you, the outstanding working people of Matt Holly, of this plant, of North Carolina, of states all across the country, we can pull together and remind everybody around the world just why it is that there, that the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.